Razor, how's it going this week? Wonderful. How could it not be? It's perfect weather outside, and it's March in New England. It's awesome. Goalies, goalies are scoring goals. Like I imagine, everything is uh, everything's going well. I just, I want, I want you to know. I want you to know. I gave you the floor last week to really rip me over my goalie takes. I want, I want you to know. You're allowed to. Ri- you can rip me. I would encourage you to rip me. Like if you disagree with something, I want you to know the floor is yours. I tried to give you the floor to um, whether or not you disagreed and you didn't want to go there. Don't be afraid to go there with me. Sometimes I need to be slapped around and put in the corner. Mego knows this. Well, well, I do want to do that with the chicken comment you just made right like two yeah. seconds ago. But yeah, slap me around a little bit. I do want to say, though, you guys didn't play the 10 seconds before that clip last Thursday when I was on with Fourier saying that it was people from Canada calling me what's going on. That was, did not come out of my mouth. No, I know. Cut the clip a little quick. Okay, as long as that. But you could. Like, but you could have told us the people. You could have told us that no. people from Canada were complaining about me. Well, I, I I didn't find out until Tuesday night, so it's been it's oh. been a week now. So then I, now I can do it now. Okay. Um, that that yes, I did have some people read, but you did you did cast a wide net with that one. I was oh. surprised it got all the way to Toronto. Oh. But I my... can only imagine what your your messages look like. Razor, it's not pretty. It's still not pretty <laughs> from that comment. Uh, all right, what what don't you like about the Chikrin take there? Because I like Orlov better. I think Orlov's a better defenseman. I think the fact you got Orlov to win a Stanley Cup, who has already won a Stanley Cup, Chikrin, unproven, plays in Arizona in front of 4,000 people every night. Yes, he's young. Yes, he has a contract with term. But how are the Bruins going to make that contract work in the next couple of years if you want to sign David Pasternak anyway? So I, I love the Orlov move for what you're trying to accomplish here. Going up against this Eastern Conference that continually gets better every single day. Orlov's a better fit for right now. We were talking about yesterday Orlov's first comments that he had ahead of the game right after he was traded to the Bruins. And he just sounded a little meh. He said things like, "Uh, it's fine, I guess. I don't know what's going to happen this summer. I'm paraphrasing. What would you say Mm -hmm. about the situation that he's in joining the Bruins? Do you get the sense that he's enthusiastic about being here? Or is it kind of something that maybe blindsided him a little bit? No, he's excited. I think there's two things. One, it's a second language. English is a second language. So you have to understand there's lots that, that still gets lost in translation, even though he's been here for 10 years. There's, there's different ways of expressing yourself. Two is he was with that team, the Washington Capitals, his entire career. Uh, you fly out to Vancouver. You play a game at four in the afternoon coming from a team that you have all these friendships with, the only place you've lived in a different country that's not yours a place where you won Stanley Cups with your friends, it is shocking. It's a shocking thing to your system. And so I, but I'm definitely not reading into after game press conferences. Uh, It's, it's going to take him a little bit of time to get adjusted. He hasn't even been to Boston yet. He's going to get off the plane tomorrow morning at like six in the morning. They're going to give him a key to a hotel and he's going to be off to a hotel. So we have to give this guy a few weeks here to get, get acclimated and get used to being in a new place and where to go and how to deal with Boston traffic and, and all those things. So yeah, luckily the, the weather's not depressing here at all or anything. For <laughs> it's arrival. like Siberia. Oh, yeah, it is, it's paradise here. It is paradise here. <laughs> uh, Razor, whatever anybody thinks about Don Sweeney, I don't think anyone can really criticize his maneuvering at the trade deadline in the past couple years. And again, at this year, what do you think makes him so good around this time of the season when it comes time to get on the phone with these other GMs? That's a great question. I think, I think the the culture of the team, the identity of the team, allows him to really pinpoint what works. There's not you, you've seen this team and this organization get players out of here. Natural selection, I would say that that don't fit the mindset, that don't fit the the workmanlike ability. So. You have a very good idea of what the, the core leadership wants in players here. So that allows you to really dial in on guys like Garnet Hathaway, Dmitry Orlov, Taylor Hall. The other thing is, and, and it's it, people, hockey players want to play in Boston. So that is another way. Like Not this Patrick Kane. Deal, well, no, Patrick Kane wanted to go to the New York Rangers. And that's the example of you basically don't have to give anything up for him. Taylor Hall wanted to come to Boston. So you get a much, much better discount for him to come here and 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 Kane is the same thing he wanted to be a ranger the rangers give up a fourth round pick and a second like nothing to get him but that's because he wasn't going anywhere else so so that has also helped at the deadline but i think it's 
it's Don's ability to really recognize what the team needs and, and players being willing to be a part of that. Talking to Andrew Raycroft of Nesson, joining us here as he does each and every week on Jones and Mego with Arcan. Um, should Don Sweeney be done? Like you, you look at, we just mentioned Patrick Kane, maybe Chikrin could move. Tarasenko's already gone to the Rangers, Timo Meyer to the Devils. Like, you know, you go further back. We already saw Bo Horvat move. Ryan O'Reilly is with the Leafs. Like the Eastern Conference is beefing up and potentially closing the gap on the Bruins. Should Don Sweeney be done with the moves he's already made, or does he need to make another move before Friday? I think he could make another move. I, I, I'm certainly not disappointed. I wouldn't have my, you know, I, I wouldn't be beside myself if they don't make a move, but there's a lot of time left. Uh, we're, we're sitting here on Tuesday. We have four or three days still, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, to, to have something else happen. If they happen to go out and get a winger that can, like is a, a Marcus Johansson of 2019, a guy who isn't going to score every game but could score every game if he gets going. Um, if, if they got a winger like that, I would be certainly okay with that and think that that was a move. Uh, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna sell the farm to do that. They're not in panic mode in any way. But I would imagine the phone is ringing off the hook still over at Warrior. Uh, Andrew, when you see Orloff, the way that he was paired with McAvoy last night, uh, do you think that that's a pairing that's going to last? And what are you potentially, I guess, giving up if he replaces Grizzly for most of the time there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't have it. I have zero sense, to be honest, Mego. I have zero sense on what they're going to do game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think a lot of it's going to depend on who they're playing. I think it's going to become matchup oriented. I think over the next 10 to 12 games, you're going to see somewhat of a, a rotation that's almost planned. Uh, it'll be interesting to see comes out tonight. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Forbert. Maybe it's an Orloff, for that matter, who traveled across the country. Maybe you give him a little rest before he gets back here. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the sense is. I think what we saw last night is that Orloff's really good on his left side. That left side, when he's on his onside wing or onside D, he, he's very good. Uh, he can play with very good players like McAvoy. There was one play where he made a backhand pass from behind his net to the front of the net to McAvoy in the second period last night where you need to have a hot, lot of hockey sense and a lot of confidence to make that play, and, and he can do that with good players. So uh, a long way to say I really have no idea what the pairings are going to look like, but I do think Orlov can move around, and I do think it'll depend on what team they're playing in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Until then... It's just going to be a real big rotation trying to manage minutes for all the D. Um, Razor, a lot of people said there were three MVP candidates playing in that game last night. Of course, Connor McDavid, David Pasternak, and Linus Allmark. How do you feel about goalies getting MVP consideration? Well, I, they don't get it, to be quite honest. It, it's And honestly, Connor McDavid, we saw what Connor McDavid is last night. I, I don't know how you vote against that. As great as Linus Allmark's been this season and as valuable as the goalie position is for every team. I think the fact that Linus is in as much of a kind of that rotation, that on off, he's not going to play 65 games for this team. I think that sets him back a little bit. There's no question he's the best goalie in the league this season. He wins the Vesna hands down, but I think it's hard. Chester, and to you guys, you talking about him. He really had a very, very good opportunity to win the heart last year, and he didn't because Matthews got 62 goals. I think that was as close as we've seen in a while, a goalie winning the heart. Yeah, he finished, I, he I, finished third, Razor, yeah. Yeah, so if a goalie, if, if a player, McDavid, gets 150 points this year, you can't, you can't give it to anybody else. It has to be him. So I, I, as much as I love Linus and what he's done, I think the Vesna will have to will have to do for him. So hypothetically, Linus plus five thousand at uh, Encore wouldn't be a good thing. <laughs> 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 wow. Hypothetically, you might want to go buy a coffee. Or, I mean, okay, going good to know. Especially if the Bruins yeah. are going to trade him. I mean, then that, why, 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 why would you make that bet? <laughs> if he ends up uh, in Arizona for the rest of the season, we get Chickering. I mean, yeah, it's gonna, see, I'm, you know. I, I tried to warn you. So I was watching. I was watching your post game last night, Razor, and I'm paraphrasing. Phrasing here, Thank but you. but I did I, I jotted this down. You you said something to the effect of you know last night the difference is the blueprint in these two teams how the Oilers are built with a thirteen million dollar player in Connor McDavid versus the Bruins who are winning with the Hathaways and the Felinos and the Nosheks of the world. I, it doesn't apply to this year, but are the Bruins going to be in that same boat if they have to give Pasternak twelve twelve and a half million dollars? 
it gets tougher to build a roster. I, the caveat is is you have Linus Allmark, Jeremy Swayman's restricted. You assume, he's going to sign somehow. They'll get him back. And then you have Hampus Lindholm and Charlie McAvoy. And you could go through Brandon Carlo as well. So just there, that makes them not the Edmonton Oilers. But going forward, it does make it harder when you have 12, $13 million guys on your salary to, to finagle and make, make salaries and, and players and rosters work. So I think that's, that's part of what's going to happen. At the end of the day, you still need those players, so you have to find a way to find the balance of both of them. Uh, if the Bruins win the Stanley Cup, it's going to be very hard to keep Hathaway, Nosek, Foligno, all the unrestricted free agents back. You're going to have to move on and get a little younger on the back end of the, the depth forwards if you're signing David Pasternak. You ever score a goalie goal at any level? I didn't. I took a rip in junior. I, I was pretty confident when I was 19. I, I, I shot a few down. I was about as close as Swayman was one night in Kingston, Ontario for the Kingston Frontenac. Um, <laughs> but I, I wasn't able to pull it off. And, and uh, especially this week, I'm very sad about it because I've been asked that a lot and I have to say no every single what, time. What happens when you miss? Do you get yelled at? No, that's the thing. So that, that's why when guys go for it and guys score, you, you have not a lot of guys do it. You have to have a perfect situation like a team that's 46, 8, and 5. Or you have to have a situation where you are the MVP of the league that you're playing in or the best goalie because you have to have a lot of confidence and your teammate has to give you a pass to do that and effectively could possibly cost your team a chance to win. So again, like I was saying, with Linus Olmark the other night, if you're fighting for a wild card position in Detroit and you're up two to one in Vancouver, you are not taking a rip for that goal uh, with 45 seconds left. You're dumping that off to Charlie McAvoy on the left side and letting him skate it out of the zone. It's a good point. Uh, he's Andrew Raycroft. He joins us every week at this time on Tuesdays at three thirty. Uh, he joins us on the Harbor One Hotline. Andrew, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. You got it, gang. Have a good day. All right, Razor uh, here every Tuesday, as we said.